Now, welcome to the CESS meeting. Today's date is March 9th. We have a very light agenda this week, so it will probably short be short. Um, Leo has a couple of topics he'd like to announce, if not discuss, since we don't have enough of a quorum to give it a, a proper conversation. But um, take, please take it away, Leo. Um, thank you. So I'm going to reverse the order of the topics here to just start discussing with this small one. Uh, first. Um, and this small one is uh, an issue that was raised uh, this week uh, by Jack Works. And I think it's a reasonable request to consider at least part, a partial, uh, a part of the, his, uh, their request. This request is about restricting the second parameter of import value. Did we? Oh, no. People are still here. So I'm just kind of messing up the, the windows. Um, the, uh, restricting the second parameter of import value to be string only, to only are, accept are you values. Are you think you sh are you sharing a uh, slide or something? Because I don't see anything. Um, no, I just wrote okay. some quick notes in the, uh, in it, the agenda. It's fine. It just sounded like you the way you were talking. Never mind. Carry on. Oh, OK, OK. Uh, Sorry about this confusion. So I don't have anything like as a presentation. It's more like, I think it's a quick topic. The example in the agenda might be uh, good enough for what I'm telling um, and the, the reasons. So import value today, those have two uh, parameters. The first parameter to be uh, the specifier and the second parameter to be uh, a name that will be parsed as a string. Um, uh, saying what name do you want from the WSDO uh, module namespace object. Um, An import value will return a promise that resolves into uh, that name's uh, value. Um, so the first step for this work, for Jack, what Jack works uh, proposed, is to have um, a restriction that, that that was actually a suggestion by uh, Matthew Hoffman. Sorry, sorry, I, I just uh, remember here, uh, and given the, the the names of who actually uh, did that that suggestion, I like that a lot because if we restrict uh, the second parameter of import value to be a string only, that avoids uh, people trying to use import value with that second uh, argument to have a parsed. Uh, uh, Undefined, undefined parse to a string and try to capture like undefined name from the module in space object, um, a string undefined name from, from that. Um, that is good enough. And that also opens a path to later as a follow-up to this proposal, but I don't intend to expand this proposal more than just this restriction. Uh, we can have as a follow-up like considering import value to receive iterable values that are not exactly a string, such as an array uh, that gives, let's say, multiple names to be resolved. So when the promise is resolved, it returns uh, an array of, uh, of the values with the, from the given names. Um, so my intention is to bring to TC39 a uh, normative change to the current stage three that only means a restriction. The import value, the second parameter must be a string. If type of the second parameter is not string, it throws a type error. I'm gonna write this down in the agenda just to make it clear. Just a thought, if I may. Um, if this restriction is too much, meaning if it turns out we need symbols in the future for names, it'll be easier to loosen it rather than to tighten it in the case of we're too loose initially. Yes. 
like and symbols are currently not and then I don't ever see them being allowed as um, import exports because they are you can already add them to a module namespace object uh, as the user lens, which is weird, but that's what it is. Um, yeah, one of the reasons I'm not working on uh, the second part, which is which is actually uh, the uh, considering iterable values, because I think that adds a lot for a stage three proposal. So I think it's worth having it uh, that as, as a separate proposal to avoid uh, waiting for longer for shadow realms, and that's actually a little bit polyfillable as well. You can monkey patch import import value and do some uh, work there in work there in user land. Also, there's this second topic here, which is a little bit sensitive because I know not everyone is happy about it. Uh, but I think we, we should do some work to incubate a pragmatic approach. We can we could incubate some pragmatic approach for some structure serialization across certain realms. And by incubating, I mean definitely not bringing... Oh yeah, uh, thanks for opening and sharing it already. Um, so that means some work that will... Uh, consider what we have today uh, from Shadow Realms, what uh, is evaluated, uh, how things are evaluated across realms. And uh, what is the just like structure serialization, which is not uh, the desirable part. And what is uh, like, what are the changes that I would want on top? Um, this is a thing I just briefly discussed uh, internally. It needs some expansion, um, but that's what I mean. Like I want all sorts of feedback, like uh, if this can move to a workable and desirable state. Of course, this work should be done once again as a follow-up work, not block in stage three of shadow realms. Um, so the uh, levels, uh, level zero represents the current status of what we have today. Um, like primitive values can be transferred as is, including symbols, callable va values are uh, connect via wrapped exotic objects. And, uh, and uh, uh, any non-callable objects will throw a type error. If you go through the levels, there, like, there is one thing that we want and we discussed in the past, and I know we still have contentions on that, but that's like, I think this is better seen as a whole package. So shared buffers, uh, shared array buffers are one of the steps, but also bringing some other serialization there, um, I think, which is represented by level 1B. Um, can we, thank you, Chris. Um, yeah, so for every level, like all the bold parts are uh, the new additions for each one of these levels here. Um, so with that, we can have some, uh, uh, do some deep serialization of array objects or ordinary objects. Uh, one of the things that I know uh, of, uh, it's of a concern is how we handle proxies and, uh, so we have some considerations as well. I think it's um, down below. This level is like from uh, where I'm starting this work. I don't mean like we should have separate implementations of each one of these levels. I'm just saying like how I'm progressing like from applying the structure serialization to all, all the, the other parts. My uh, desire is to go all the way to the end. Can, it, can we? And just scroll down more. Uh, thank you. Um, so this serialization here would actually uh, lead us as well to uh, wrap promises and iterators as we do wrap uh, functions today. 
that would be helpful if we resolve any evaluation into a promise. We can do some wrapping uh, of these resolved promises as well in iterators. Uh, this is a sort of like complex work, but I think it's uh, the way to resolve that. And uh, this work with uh, proxies is one of, uh, I think it's one of the things that is sensitive, like how we do we resolve proxies as structural serialization today. And the known issue with that is just like uh, ignore proxies. And I don't think that's the, uh, that should be the approach. We can actually just capture the value. But I think, in my opinion, proxy should be just resulted in a serialized uh, static value that would have no communication, or we could do a wrapping of the proxy to wrapping being much more complex. Go ahead, Matthew, please. I think the issue with proxy is that if there's a proxy in front of something else that is recognized uh, with internal states, such as a date or uh, something like that, it needs to work uh, the same as if you had actually uh, sent the date. Uh, and the only way I believe this can work is uh, somehow the proxy creator is able to say, like, this is how you're, uh, you should be serializing this object. Uh, this is how you should be serializing it. Uh, and that's a mechanism that structured cloning does not offer. And that's a mechanism that implicit cloning in general uh, doesn't provide. Yeah. Um. I think that one thing that's fair to say is that the scope of your ambition with this is um, high, but less than ours <laughs> like what 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 agoric wants to build or what we've already built provides a communication channel that goes all the way up to level uh, pardon uh, uh, it creates a means for for inter-realm communication that's at least level two but then goes on to also do eventual send so the um or at least pardon matches the scope of the ambition up to level two and then does eventual send and varies in detail. Um, and I can't speak to that myself, but what I can say is that um, in the long term, we need to have something like this. We, we agree that we need to be able to communicate with this level of fidelity between, yeah, it, between realms. In my opinion, what is shared between realms is highly dependent on uh, the application and whether you want to sterilize just data like object is uh it's just a record that you, you serialize or whether you reify something on the other side that's uh, a proxy um that can do live um communication to the original object is is another approach um may i propose that as a litmus test for whatever whatever designs we come up with here um, we would want it to mostly be the same as inter-process communication, right? So that you could largely do the same thing between two agents that you can do between a shadow realm and it's uh, among shadow realms or between a shadow realm and the, and the incubator realm. Is that fair? So I guess there's a, one question we need to solve. IPC and uh, eventual send and all those things are asynchronous, uh, over asynchronous uh, communication channels. The interaction between uh, shadow realms is actually synchronous. Um, and it is a valid question whether whatever cloning mechanism uh, and serialization that happens like should work the same for both. Uh, and it's actually a valid question for the web platform too. Currently, web platform only has um, serial, full serialization because um, it is an asynchronous communication channel. Um, Just to bring some of the signals here, uh, our initial goal was, um, as you may have heard, 
was to create a channel for uh, shared array buffers mm -hmm. because that's not a, a possibility today and we cannot take advantage of shared array buffer across realms. Uh, when I mentioned that, I got the signals from implementers where they could do shared array buffers if we had structured serialization. But I'm well aware that structured serialization as this is not desirable either by other stakeholders like uh, people in this group. And hey, I, when they say that, do they mean that in the sense of trading horses or uh, physical limitation? More like trading horses. Like it's not desirable for them to just create a channel for shared array buffers only. And if we want to create a channel, they rather, uh, they, are, they would be very positive. That's one of the signal, like it would be very positive to accept structure serialization that has shared array buffers bundled together. Uh, but structure serialization as is, it's also not interesting. And so uh, the idea here is like this document is to become a sort of like expanded structure serialization, like or enhanced structure serialization is like a structure serialization that does the things that it is already doing as is today for many of the values, but many of the things that it errors today, that is, we're gonna fill some of, we're gonna fill these gaps, like uh, what we do for proxies, what we do for promises, what we do for uh, iterators. Uh, hey, wait, um, um, I think you can probably decouple. I'm wondering if it would be worth decoupling the promise and iterator uh, stuff um, from this. I, I, I somehow always consider them like somewhat orthogonal and I believe you can actually just do the um, promise and iterator handling through a very thin membrane type uh, approach on top of uh, the callable boundary. Um, I think promises in iterators are a very um, requested feature. And that's why I also have have it in a different level in that document. Yeah. Um, but I, I, putting it as a level like two behind the rest, like I'm I'm saying, you might want to approach it uh, entirely uh, orthogonally. Like, is there a way to solve those things without serialization? It, it can be uh, one of the things that I can tell. It's unfortunately, it's not like a, as a, a high impact feature for uh, me. So I will not be able to champion that part. Uh, as like for many things that I, I'm like, I have, since I joined the product, uh, I started as a product uh, manager, I have so many things on my plate right now. And I'm having to say no to so many, uh, so many things that are like, I'd love to, but it's unfortunately not on my priority uh, list. Like array buffers are one of the things that I, uh, that will create more impact for me. So that, uh, that will make me like, if I divide them, I would probably go with the part where array buffers are living. Uh, promises iterators are nice to have in this case. But to, to revisit, Chris's question, what, what we're talking about with all of those are special cases, special treatment that, that would not be possible in your process, for instance. Right. Promise and async iterator, async iterator. At that level, I can imagine a possibility of having the same behavior between realms, regardless of whether they're in the same process, but iterator, for certain could only be done with a synchronous with well i'm not even talking about synchronous versus asynchronous but it's like it's a it's a privileged treatment uh that what comes over the channel is more than one could express generically through serialization right it, what's different is that you promise async iterator iterators you can 
build all those things in the user lands where shared array buffer sharing across the callable binary, uh, you can't. You yes, have to have uh, yeah. in support. Yeah. yeah. And, and in general, I'm in favor of um, starting with this, doing the work at this at, at the TC39 level that allows more to be done in user space before mm -hmm. before paving a cow path in user space. Right, I agree. So that means putting promises and iterators apart and not working on that right now? Or the other way? I think at some point, one of us should probably build a user land implementation of it. It's, it shouldn't be too hard uh, and, and show people how to do it. Yeah. I just don't have time. <laughs> yeah, as I mentioned, like the, the functionality that I don't have today that I cannot afford to have today is to share the rate buffers. This is what affects in the, like uh, the full vir virtualized environment. Um, so my hope is to provide as some like, if the implementers are positive, if we bring them structure serialization, what is also like the modifications that we do with search structure serialization that wouldn't suck, uh, that wouldn't bring like problems as it brings you to proxies today? I don't know if it's possible. I'm Yeah, that's the, the that's the, the the challenge, and that's why. I... Right, that that's that's all privilege, that's all things that, you know, is working behind the scenes in observable ways, you know, with with observable consequences. Yeah. If I. And it's still to my understanding that like structure serialization exists today for some of these things are not still remain undesirable. Right? Like without any special treatment mm -hmm. of these values. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. That gives me some sense of like the size of this work. Um, good, I appreciate that. All right. That sounds like a wrap to me. Yes. Uh, is there anything anybody else wishes to discuss on the agenda? All right. All right, let's, I'm gonna stop the recording. Thank you for coming everyone.